Trains is a deck building game from designer Hisashi Hayashi and AEG. In Trains, players compete to build the most far reaching and efficient rail system in Japan. You can play with two to four players, and it takes about 45 minutes. Players begin trains by choosing a side of the board to play on and then laying out the eight core card stacks in the supply area. They use the randomizers to select another eight cards and add their stacks to the supply. Each player gets a starting deck of seven normal trains, two lay rails cards, and one station expansion, and collects a set of rail tokens. One rail token goes at the start of the scoring track, and players take turns placing their first rail token on the map. A player's starting point can be on any space that is not a C space or a numbered remote location, and no two players can share a starting space. Each player draws a hand of five cards, and the game begins. On their turn, a player can play cards from their hand or buy new cards from the supply. They can take as many of these actions as they'd like and in any order. However, a new action can't begin until the previous one is complete. Playing a card face up on the table gives you the amount of money listed in the top left and also allows you to take the actions listed on the card. If there are multiple actions, you have to take them all and you have to take them in order. So the blue train cards will give you money and they may also provide victory points. The gold building cards don't give you any money or actions, but they're worth victory points at the end of the game. The green action cards let you lay rails by placing one of your tokens adjacent to a rail token that you already have on the board. Now, spaces that are separated by a yellow and black line are not considered adjacent. And you can only place one of your own rail tokens in a single space, and you may have to pay a cost to place that rail depending on the type of terrain that you're placing it in. So laying rails in a field doesn't cost you anything, while rivers and mountains cost one and two, respectively. To lay rails in a city, you pay a cost of one, plus an amount equal to the number of station markers that are on that city space, and remote locations cost the amount that is listed on the space itself. A space containing another player's tokens is going to cost you an amount equal to the number of other tokens on that space, and it also generates an additional waste. Waste is generated by any card which has the waste symbol in its description. Now you can't buy waste cards, and they don't provide any actions or victory points. So you can choose in your turn to not buy any cards and not use any actions, and instead take all of the waste cards from your hand and place them back into the supply. The purple station expansion card lets you add a station marker to a city space, and each city can only hold as many station markers as it has buildings shown on its space. The red action cards are going to give you a range of different abilities, from generating money and dealing with waste, to letting you draw cards or retrieve them from your discard pile. You can buy as many cards as you can afford, but you can only use money off cards that you've played this turn, so you can't carry money or actions over from one turn to the next. Now, once you've played and bought as many cards as you'd like, you're going to move any cards that you played that turn to the discard pile, along with anything that you bought, any waste that you collected, and the remainder of your hand. Then you're going to draw back up to a hand of five cards, and it's the next player's turn. So the game ends when four of the stacks of cards in the supply are empty. This doesn't include the waste stack. It also ends when one player runs out of rail tokens, or when we run out of station tokens. So at the end of the game, players add up any victory points they get from gold cards that are in their deck. They also get two to eight victory points for every rail token they have on a city, and the amount they get depends on how many stations there are in that city. You also get victory points for every remote location that you have a rail on, and the value is listed on the space. So the player at the end with the most victory points is the winner. So what I found really interesting about trains is that it doesn't do anything new with deck building mechanics in terms of changing them around. This is pretty much the same setup that you've been seeing since Dominion, but it puts them to a new and interesting use. The board that's involved in the game adds a really interesting spatial component to it, and you'll actually find, especially with a larger group, that you're playing a really tight area control game uh, that can get really tense and is really quite engaging.
What that means is that the deck building is actually basically acting as a resource management tool for this board empire that you're building on the side. Um, you know, you've got to manage waste, you've got to keep your efficiency high, you've got to generate enough money that you can lay rails where you need, but the cards are really just supporting what's going on on the map, which I found really interesting and it's quite fun to play because you've got these two different games going on that mesh together quite nicely. Now one thing that this game doesn't do at all, and this might disappoint some players who are big fans of deck builders, is that it doesn't have a strong engine building component the way that you'd expect from something like Dominion. The cards are really there in a supporting role to the network building on the map, and this is a train game at its heart that just happens to use deck building mechanics. Uh, so it's something that you need to be aware of going in if you're a really big deck builder fan. So that great spatial element that Kai was talking about adding to the deck building side um, is fantastic, but it is definitely weaker when you only have two players involved in the game. Because part of the great thing about that spatial element is you do get that crunch, like that area control stuff, and you're always stepping on each other's toes. Now when you only got two players on the board, that doesn't happen quite as much. It almost feels like the board should be a little smaller if you have less players in it. Um, also, I kind of have to mention the theme here as a bit of a negative. Um, train games are very popular, so maybe it, you know, it doesn't bother everybody, but the marketing on this game is, is really too bad. I mean, the box is kind of boring, the train theme doesn't appeal to everybody, um, and it feels like this is a game which probably could benefit from a more interesting theme, a more vibrant theme, which I would like to see. Uh, that being said, you know, I'm not a deck building fan at all. This uh, a deck building game isn't a game that I'm going to pick up and play on my gaming nights. Uh, but because this game has that nice spatial element to it, it's quite light. It's quite quick. It, it sort of scales down the complexity of a game like Dominion. Um, I actually enjoy it quite a bit more. So it's a great gateway game for deck builders. So if you play this game, and you really like it, and you really like that sort of resource management mechanic that's being done with the cards, then you're gonna know that you can go out there and try some of those more complex deck building games and you'll probably really enjoy them. So I think this game sort of sits really nicely over a border of a bunch of different types of games. It's gonna appeal to a lot of different kinds of people. It's quite quick, uh, only 45 minutes long. That's great, so you can play it quite a bit. Um, and I love the board, I love the components, the art is, nice for what it is. I mean, if you like trains, they're done really well. Uh, so yeah, I, I like this game for sure. And it's not a game that I expected to enjoy. <laughs>